Hello, everyone. We want to talk about quality. When I say we, this is a joint paper with my colleague Eamon and Lily. Quality is a little bit like a box of chocolates, hence the image. Actually, trying to define what quality is is a very difficult thing, let alone what quality assurance might mean. As you can see from this analysis or literature review, it's an elusive term. Nevertheless, what we're framing this talk around is this big question. What does a quality student learning experience look like in the era or the new artificial intelligence era? Three sub questions to think about that we want to explore. Firstly, what quality assurance standards and processes are required for blended, hybrid and online learning? Secondly, are our existing quality assurance processes, standards sufficient? Do we need new ones? And if we do think they need to differ from those already in place, from more traditional ones, uh, what would they look like? Three premises or assumptions underpin the paper here as well. Firstly, that quality concerns are not new. Delivery mode is not a key factor when it comes to quality and definition wars about different modalities are largely unproductive. So let me explore those three premises. The first is an interesting flashback to another era, the pre-COVID era. This comes from an Irish Times piece just before we hosted in November 2019, the ICD World Conference on Online Learning. It was an attack on new models of online learning and a defense of traditional modes of teaching. So this is not new. Actually, I felt the need to respond in January to this piece that appeared in the Irish in the uh, Times Higher Education, challenging whether online education will lead to the death of conversation. You can see that I ended up writing a blog piece, is face-to-face -face teaching killing the art of conversation? A very stinging critique, I have to say. I um, received a lot of positive feedback on that um, blog post. So quality is not a new consideration. And just to reinforce this from quality assurance agencies, we've had particular initiatives and standards for a long time, 2002, 2004, 2005 here from the US, the UK, and my last life in New Zealand, the e-learning guidelines. So moving to the second premise, delivery mode is not a key factor. We have overwhelming evidence that show when designed well, online or blended approaches are just as good, if not better than traditional modes of teaching. The most recent meta-analysis there out of 2022, 215 there, right back to 2004, you can see. So we know this. In fact, there's a paradox. I was a co-author of this paper a few years ago, 2015. Imagine if, for example, that face-to-face -face teaching was not the traditional mode, but online was the traditional mode, and then face-to-face -face came along. Would we not be asking, how do we know whether it's quality? Because at least in the online mode, we have evidence, we have data, we can have a record of what took place. Who knows what happens when the lecturer enters the lecture hall and closes the door? The third point, definition wars. A nice um, analysis of the various terminology here last year in the Journal of Online Learning. And what's interesting in this analysis, it actually boils it down to largely two big buckets. And those big buckets on campus and off campus are largely in terms of modes of delivery based around where the learner is located. The authors do then go on to kind of map um, these two big buckets and as many of the subterms, there are more that they have in a more comprehensive view of this. The only critique I would say is in person for me is what I could be doing right now. I don't think I have to be in place to be in person. And that word remote still shows up as a deficit view under distance learning. Okay, so those are the premises. Back to the sort of main point that we want to explore, the quality challenge of digital higher education. We know quite a lot about quality. Um, you can see some of the principles there on the side um, that is multifaceted, multidimensional. It's 
highly contextualized. Institutions need to drive it, not elsewhere. It needs to be owned and distributed right throughout an institution. It's all about having quality conversations, part of a dynamic, thriving living culture. And then when we're trying to look for where co what quality looks like, there are um, inputs, processes, resources, and outputs. Typically, the outputs are a bit of a gap, and they cut across sort of the macro, the meso, the micro, and even the nano level. So the macro could be the national level, the meso is the institution, the micro might be the program or the department, and maybe the nano is the most important, the learner. So there are different ways of thinking about quality. What I want to do in the remaining time is just share three projects that we've been involved in with all overlapping interests in quality assurance and quality enhancement. I won't explain the difference, so I don't have time. So three projects. Let's talk about the first one with the European Universities Association. We published back in 2021 this analysis of all of the, well, not all, 20 different quality assurance and quality enhancement self-assessment tools that exist in the literature to support institutions to develop quality in digital higher education. Um, actually, there's been a, an analysis of many of those tools in this uh, journal here, Measuring Quality in Online Education and Metasynthesis, and it identified over 100 of these tools. What's really interesting, though, is in the same project that we're involved with, with EUA, only 12% of institutions and quite a sizable survey of European universities, higher education institutions in 2020 reported that they really engage in self-assessment or benchmarking exercise, just 12%. Uh, heads up here to um, DCU, we've done this, uh, UCC has both of our reports uh, publicly available on the websites. So um, that's one project that lays a really good framework or grounding, if you like, for now, the work I want to talk about that I was involved in last year with the OECD. We published this report, I think, in about November last year. The report involved quite a few dimensions, but I'll just touch on some of the more interesting ones. Firstly, we looked at what national quality assurance agencies are doing around the globe in terms of the new era and the post-COVID era as well, if you like, in terms of digital education. Essentially, what we found is three responses from national agencies. 22 jurisdictions have done nothing. Um, three jurisdictions have made an intentional decision that they don't need to do anything, um, that their existing standards for traditional modes of study are actually enough for what we have now, that quality is just quality. And then there are 13 jurisdictions, including Ireland, that have developed sort of supplementary, additional guidelines, uh, criteria, benchmarks. Um, so the 22, we can't confidently say that haven't done anything, whether that's intentional or whether they just haven't got to it yet. It'd be interesting. I'm involved uh, with Eamon and Lily in the Irish initiative, where I'll share as the third example. But just to elaborate a little bit, here's what Malta did last, last year, maybe 2021. I may um, have got the dates wrong on this one, but you may wish to look at what a smaller uh, country or a region has done under the UK remit um, around a new set of quality assurance guidelines, see the eight domains that it, they've identified. What we've done in the OECD work in reviewing, um, going beyond the EUA project and reviewing many of the existing quality assurance, quality enhancement, self-assessment tools, we've sort of analyzed them and found a few themes come through. Typically, they lack an implementation guide. In other words, you might have the framework or the benchmarking tool, but there's not a lot of support on how you go about implementing it. Um, very few of these frameworks, benchmarking tools, um, have a some kind of action plan that's incorporated. What would you do as a consequence? And there's next to no research um, with just a couple of exceptions around how institutions actually use these tools or not. When they do, it's actually very unclear how they go about doing it. 
And then lastly, there's an interesting lack of alignment between all of these tools. Um, as I said earlier, there's about 100 of them and um, the mainstream approaches to quality assurance. Um, this is just another way of looking at an aggregated, aggregated summary of the tools. You can see that the um, most common area, perhaps not surprisingly, in terms of quality considerations is learning design and course delivery. Notably, assessment and feedback practices actually don't feature that in light of what's going on at the moment with AI, um, academic integrity concerns, and um, considerations around equity, diversity, and inclusion, quite um, rare to see incorporated within these self-assessment benchmarking sort of tools. So what we did with the OECD is um, try to address a little bit of the outputs gap. Um, this is just an example of um, the work that I was doing. We were actually working um, with the Quality Assurance Agency in Hungary. And so I won't elaborate here, but this will play out in um, a new set of quality assurance benchmarks, uh, actually a whole new approach to quality assurance in Hungary. So the third example, this one is closer to home. Hopefully you are familiar with these um, topic specific statutory quality assurance guidelines for providers of blended learning programs produced in 2018. I was involved in that exercise as a member of the, the sort of working group where we've had the, the contract to update these and update them in a way that includes not just blended programs, but also online learning programs. So some of you, I hope, were involved in part of the consultation. Uh, what you have here is some of the feedback we got in response to the question of what the biggest quality considerations might be captured in one or two words. You can see for yourself, assessment runs um, very clearly as a key theme. And that was before the introduction of um, AI uh, related generated texts. What we have done is also a gap analysis. So all those tools that I was showing you in frameworks and benchmarks, um, instruments that exist. What we've done is analyze those and looked at um, the way in which they're structured, but also what isn't in them. So you can see some of the new and emerging quality considerations on the last column that don't appear in a lot of the existing quality assurance approaches. I should have mentioned that what's unique about the Irish existing framework is that it has three layers to it. Um, the program context, the um, learner experience context um, and the organizational context. I probably put those in the wrong order. Um, then there's perhaps a national context. Um, we won't worry about that and what we're doing. It's implicit if you like. A little taster of uh, what we've done so far. This is very fresh. Um, so this is the statutory quality assurance guidelines for providers of blended and online learning programs. We hope that these will be out for consultation in February, it may spill to March, depending on how long it takes to work through the QQI processes. Here's a little taster under the organizational context of the kind of uh, approach we've adopted with a scoping statement, a good practice statement. In some cases, there will be a separate column for online and blended. In this case, this just implies that um, the procedures that need to be in place actually apply to both blended and online learning programs. So I must be pretty much out of time. Where to from here? Well, to some degree, I've already indicated that we will go through another round of consultation with the QQI um, revised guidelines. That consultation probably will take place um, in March, I expect, once the um, final draft is completed and you'll get an input into ultimately the final version of those. Um, beyond that, um, I want to just finish off as a bookend or maybe the last chocolate, if you like, what does um, a quality student learning experience look like in the new artificial intelligence era? That's the question we began with. I'm not sure I've answered it. I've given you a helicopter and really quick version of some of the projects that attempt to answer that question. But if I'm really pushed to answer the question, I think I just simply say chocolate is always the answer, no matter what the question. I don't think we'll get away with that in the QQI guidelines. 
Thank you very much. Um, thanks to Eamon and Lily for their input into uh, this presentation, but also the projects, um, some of the key references here, and hopefully there might be a little bit of time for discussion, otherwise straight into the next presentation. Have a good day.